Let's look at an actual intraosseous infusion on a living patient. The site is cleansed as for an IV with betadine and or isopropyl alcohol if possible. In an emergency, this step shouldn't be belabored if those substances are not available immediately. The site is located by palpating two finger breadths below the knee on the medial aspect of the proximal tibia. The needle is grasped with the butt end in the palm of the hand and the fingertips at the tip of the needle resulting in a low center of gravity. Moderate pressure is used to obtain entry of the point through the skin and subcutaneous tissues and a smooth, controlled, to and fro twisting motion with moderate pressure is used to advance the needle tip through the periosteum and the cortex of the tibia. It pays to be patient and to continue use of only moderate pressure so as to avoid the complication of using too much force and carrying your momentum through the cortex and the bone marrow and through the opposite cortex as we visited just before. Sometimes it seems to take a little bit uh, too long. Actually, in this case, this is one of the tougher tibial cortexes that I have personally encountered. Still, the cortex is entered within approximately 60 seconds. Feel the loss of resistance, and the needle stands on its own as a nail in a board. Unscrew the stylet with a counterclockwise twisting motion, and attach your primed IV tubing. Again, this is preferable to attaching your syringe directly to the needle, so as to avoid manipulation on the needle and enlarging the hole through which its shaft passes. You can attempt to aspirate marrow by pinching off the tubing to the IV and applying suction on your syringe tip. Here there is appropriate return of bloody marrow. Next, pinch off the tubing to the patient and draw up your IV fluid through the IV tubing. Now proceed with the bolus intraosseous infusion, pinching off the tubing to the IV solution, allowing it to pass into the marrow through the intraosseous needle. Continue and always observe the skin at the site of insertion for signs of swelling, which indicates extravasation, the main complication of intraosseous infusion. This picture shows how rapidly fluids can be infused through an intraosseous needle. These bolus infusions can be continued as indicated, depending on if a volume resuscitation or infusion of drugs is needed for the clinical situation. Any drug that can be infused IV can be infused through an intraosseous needle. Once you have performed your initial emergency infusions, it's a good idea to secure the tubing as soon as possible using a hinge tape technique where the tape is stuck to itself for some distance before being attached to the skin. This results in maximum flexibility and strength. As you can see here, tension against the line can be considerable, resulting in motion of the whole extremity without dislodging the needle. Finally, the extremity should be immobilized in a splint, whatever splint is available in the current situation. Ideally, we want to immobilize the extremity at the joints above and below the site of infusion the same as we would do for a fracture.
during the entire time of intraosseous infusion, we should remember to continue attempts at gaining more conventional IV access. When the intraosseous infusion is no longer needed, it can be discontinued and dressed exactly in the same manner as a conventional IV. Finally, I'd like to share with you a fluoroscopy of an intraosseous injection of dye through a tibial intraosseous needle. Here we see the needle in place in the proximal medial tibia, and dye is injected immediately opacifying the emissary vein seen in the upper left portion of this screen. Next we'll see an intraosseous infusion showing the dye immediately filling the femoral vein and the iliac vein. In this picture, under CPR conditions, with a systole, the dye is injected and immediately fills the deep veins just as rapidly as it did during conditions of intrinsic circulation. Intraosseous infusion is indicated simply when you don't have venous access by the time the patient needs it. 